Hello, I'm JW, and this time it's once again these LED lights, which I had a look at previously. And they're the ones with the horrendously thin flex, and they have the uh, doubtful size Euro plug on one end, and a socket on the other end, so you could actually use them as an extension cord. Now, I've actually disconnected the uh, lights from the extension cord part, the wires simply just twisted together, so keep those LEDs for some future purpose, and just have a look at the extension cord part. And what we've basically got is two wires sort of loosely twisted together, and they're approximately nine meters in length. I've also cut off the plug from each end. Just makes it a bit easier to uh, connect things to that later. And the two plugs and the socket here, there's the uh, doubtful socket on one end, and of course it had the so-called Euro plug on one end, although actually that's far too small. It's a uh, rather poor quality copy of it, although the pins do fit. And a number of comments, of course, on this, and uh, one of which was that this thing is actually only rated for 2.5 amps, so uh, you probably wouldn't be uh, putting a toaster in there. Nevertheless, uh, there's plenty of things you can plug in there, and uh, though this fits into the end of this, it was probably intended so you could fit uh, another set of lights in there. Nevertheless, it's uh, more than possible to fit all kinds of other stuff in it. And uh, one particular item of interest was this one, and this was actually mentioned in the comment as well. This is a normal sort of 16 amp rated uh, plug as typically used in Europe. Here's that junk from the actual set of lights. And of course these pins will fit in there with a modicum of effort. And uh, so there you go. So it doesn't have to be the actual Euro plug style. You could of course plug something in there. So that's where your uh, toaster or other high rated appliance could actually be fitted. So uh, before we destroy these wires outside, let's just have a look at them and see uh, what they're made of and also measure the resistance of them. Now here's the wires that uh, form that sort of extension cord thing, and these go the whole length of the string, basically it's just mains in at one end, uh, carried along the two wires, and mains out at that socket at the other. And the fact it's twisted along with the LEDs uh, doesn't really change anything. And as you can see, they're not actually copper, they're probably aluminium or some other weird metal. They're uh, shiny silver, and when you actually scratch the things, they're still shiny silver underneath, and they are ridiculously thin. So that's actually two of them there, but uh, if we just separate one of them out, that's basically all you've got, just those tiny strands. And as a comparison, this uh, blue wire here is actually 0.75 square millimetres, and that's pretty much the uh, smallest size you'd normally use for mains purposes. You can get a uh, 0.5, but that's not really used for hardly anything. And as you can see, the size difference is absolutely colossal. The copper one there is clearly many times larger than that thin, flimsy aluminium or whatever it is piece on the side there. So whatever current you're going to put through this, it's going to get pretty hot pretty quickly. So uh, not going to be able to kind of measure that, but uh, it's obviously in the sort of 0.25 square millimetres or maybe even less. And they say even against the scale there, you can see the individual strands are absolutely minute. Here's the plug and the socket. Now we see both uh, pretty poor quality items, and it's the same wire direct onto those terminals there. And this plug actually does say that 2.5 amps on the side, so uh, theoretically it's only going to be good for sort of 500 and some watts at uh, 230 volts. But uh, as we'll see in a moment, if you wanted to put 500 odd watts through it, there's going to be a significant problem simply due to the wires themselves. Now let's measure the resistance of this wire, and as I said previously, what we've got here is basically 9 metres, so there's actually 18 metres in total, because it's obviously a two-core type of arrangement. And uh, here at one end I've just uh, basically twisted the two wires together, so I've got a uh, connection there. And then we have the other two ends here, of course, uh, to those ones we just saw earlier with the very thin wires contained inside, so essentially we're measuring 18 metres of uh, whatever this uh, material happens to be. So let's see what the uh, resistance of this actually is. And we'll use the uh, clips here just to attach to the two ends. So uh, just to clip on to this if we can. It's incredibly thin, so not actually the easy thing to attach to. So uh, there we have it now. That's on the 4K range, so it's just uh, Turn that down a bit. And we can probably get out to the uh, lower range actually to get a few more decimal places in there. So there we have it. So 18 metres of whatever this stuff is, 
and actually has a resistance here of 15.29 ohms. Now for mains wiring, or in fact any wiring, that is absolutely colossal. Typically if we're measuring uh, even the 0.75 copper there we're doing on that sort of length, you'll be seeing a measurement far less than 1 ohm, so whatever this stuff is, it's definitely not copper. It has very poor conductivity, and as you can see there, the resistance is actually huge. Now if you actually took this wire and connected it directly across the mains, and then twisted the two ends at the uh, far end of the 9 meters together like we've done here, then the fuse is not actually going to blow because you've got 15 ohms plus here and about 230 volts. So uh, the current in that situation would actually be about 15 amps. And of course a uh, 16 amp circuit and 15 amps, well nothing's going to happen. And uh, the result of that is you'd actually have around 3.5 kilowatts being dissipated in these wires until the wires either melted, set on fire or some other failure occurred. But the uh, fuse certainly would not fail. Certainly a 16 amp fuse could supply 15 amps forever. And even on a 13 amp thing such as in the UK, 15 amps is not going to cause that to fail either. It could actually supply that current pretty much indefinitely. Now this is the uh, arrangement we've got outside. And we've got the 18 metres of that wire just uh, randomly uh, spaced out on that board there. And the end of it is still twisted together as we had before. So essentially it's the uh, two cores of 9 metres each, or 18 metres in total. And the two ends there just go up to that uh, connector at the top there of the picture. And those uh, larger wires go off to another piece on the floor. And this will be running at the mains voltage, so uh, 240 odd volts. And in order to limit the current, on the floor here we've actually got this uh, load here, which is actually a 3 kilowatt electric immersion heater. And it's just precariously placed on the edge of the bucket there, so it could fall in at any time and cause some kind of accident. But uh, in any case, this means that if the uh, wires we have there are actually shorted out right at the uh, actual point where they're connected, then the maximum current will still be limited in the order of sort of 13 amps or so. Otherwise it's just simply going to blow the fuse and then uh, nothing will happen. So uh, effectively this is our toaster, although of course it's not really a toaster, but uh, nevertheless it's a load which we can apply. Now because of the massive resistance of those wires in the sort of 15 plus ohms range, that's actually reasonably similar to the resistance of this heating element, which is actually in the sort of 18 or 19 ohms range. So initially the current is going to be considerably less than the sort of 30 odd amps that this would take if it was connected individually. But uh, nevertheless, I'm sure that's going to be plenty enough to destroy these wires. So uh, let's get to uh, switching it on and see what happens. So it powers on and you'll see the wires are actually moving. This is due to some softening under the heat that's being generated. And now a large amount of smoke is being given off. And you saw that spark in the middle there and obviously it's just shorted out. And it's actually now gone open circuit. Now if you actually have a look there you'll see that uh, one of the strands has gone almost completely black. And that's sort of the one on the left coming down from the connection block. And the other one is still its original sort of silvery white colour. So it appears that one of them has a lower resistance than the other. So of course one overheats more than the other one. So uh, what we'll do now is just reconnect the uh, wires there to remove that uh, broken piece and see what happens to the other half. So once again the power's on and see them move slightly as the heating takes effect. And once again it's actually just uh, broken through at some point, so again it's got an open circuit, so the current basically turns off as uh, quickly as it was turned on. So it appears then this wire is uh, so thin and useless that uh, any kind of moderate current going through it simply causes part of it just to uh, burn away and the wire itself acts as a fuse and uh, disconnects its own supply, so certainly not uh, as impressive as what we hoped. Here's a view in slow motion, and you can see the smoke just curling up there. And if you look towards the middle of the picture, you should see that spark, there it is. And uh, of course that's uh, disconnected at that point, so of course the uh, current doesn't flow anymore. So here's a look at the wire afterwards, and as you can see it's uh, basically just gone black. And the outer casing has gone rather brittle, so of course it's just melting and uh, say at some point it's just breaking internally. Simply the fact that it's so ridiculously thin. So uh, fairly disappointing, it didn't uh, cause massive carnage, but nevertheless uh, it certainly overheated and uh, gave off a substantial amount of smoke. So until next time, thanks for watching.